I'm very proactive, I would think, in regards to environmental sustainability. Um, it's something that I personally have a bit of a, a passion for. I mean, I've got young kids and I want to yeah. see them grow up in a, in a world, if not you know, as good or better than what we live in now. Poor practices in our workplace can directly impact on you know, future quality of life. The environmental impact of you know, oil going down the wrong drain and, and so on and so forth, and it's, it's, it has a massive impact on the environment. As a responsible workplace, not only do we have to be responsible from a recycling and, and, and minimising environmental impact, a lot of things, if not done correctly, can also affect safety. And I mean, a lot of these things, I mean, if not handled correctly, can have a personal safety um, concern, as in a health complication from you know exposure to the wrong things, and also um, you know oils on floors and so on and so forth can cause personal injury from you know uh, slipping or things like that. So it's. Having a good, clean and responsible workshop, I mean, you know, would hopefully benefit the environment in the long run and, and benefit our staff in the, in the short term as well. All our, all our waste oil is, um, is recycled, picked up by a waste oil um, uh, company. We also, I mean, all our, all our oil filters um, obviously are never thrown in general waste. I mean, it, 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 that will have a ramification on, you know, on the environment. They're all recycled. Um, all our metal is recycled. All our cardboard is recycled. We're also very open to new, and, uh, new ideas, new innovations. If we have to invest in, in, in a piece of equipment or a, you know, a recycling uh, scheme that we have to go through, it, we will do so. We, I mean, obviously our tyres as well get recycled. We, we pay a premium for our tyre recycling. We, um, we, do we do send them to a place that makes uh, land posts and, uh, and road, uh, and, and road um, uh, material from. I personally walk out in the workshop as much as I can during the day. I need to make sure my frontline staff are safe, I need to make sure my back of house guys are safe. But not only that, I mean, fixing a small problem before it becomes a big problem is what we need to do. We got a notice board out at the workshop that we ask all our guys, if you see anything wrong, write it down. Let's get it sorted, you know, don't just, don't just tell someone, because that might get forgotten, write it down. So if I walk past it, we know we've got a problem with, you know, an oil tap or something like that. It, it costs us money in lost in lost oil. It costs us money in, uh, and also can cost us money in in the event of um, any uh, oil spillage and EPA and so on and so forth. But also it costs um, you know it costs us downtime on workshop equipment and you know and uh, and for the whole workshop. If, so if we can identify an issue early, it's it's often a very simple repair. Then waiting for it to fail and then we've got a we've got a big problem on our hands. We run. I would think a very professional workshop. So that always stays in the back of my mind and, and my foreman's mind and, and you know all, all of our minds. However, that's not the driver. The driver is running a safe, profitable and you know and, and a professional business. For me to tick all my boxes to run my business well and make sure I run a you know an ethical, safe, profitable workshop, I should tick all the boxes for everything else. We've got to do the right thing because for a sustainability issue, I mean, we if we the motor industry is under a microscope for that regard. I mean, we, we are looked at, you know, there is a lot of byproducts, waste byproducts, and so on and so forth. So we've got to we have to do the right thing, you know, to make sure that we've got a future um, as a company, as an industry, and we're an ethical place. We're we're a responsible place. We're very we're highly profitable and busy business. We need to make sure that we stay that way and keep growing. All our workshop equipment, whether it be oil pumps, whether it be hoists, whether it be uh, oil boys, any 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 piece of equipment in our workshop is maintained. We obviously run check sheets and and um, we, we run logbooks to make sure that they're maintained to make sure that they're upkept. Um, we we try to stay above the industry standard in a couple of things like you know we test and tags and, and you know maintaining electrical equipment and so forth. It, it, there's like I've said before, it's probably there's no point waiting for something to break before you fix it. I mean, your, your downtime, cost to this business is a lot more expensive. If somebody can show me the benefits of a product um, or a procedure, or I will be open ears.
Um, and if it's going to benefit my business, whether it be from a profitable side or whether it be from you know sustainability side of my staff and and, and the environment in this case, I will I will take it on. If it's going to save me money, I'm always <laughs> I always want to know about it. If it's going to cost me money, but it has a but it has a, a genuine uh, a plus. Uh, you know we're we're not. We're not here just to save costs. We're here to invest in the future of the company and invest in the future of our staff. The parts that we replace get recycled. So, uh, especially, I mean, any anything metal, anything that's ever replaced on a car is always recycled. Our packaging, we we generally can reuse through our spare parts department. We have a very large distribution chain um, within our spare parts department. We've got four drivers, one of the biggest trade dealers in Melbourne. So, any packaging that is of a, of a size that we can reuse for repackaging to, to, for, for that sort of purpose here, yeah, definitely. You know, small things like in the workshop rags and this and that, I mean, we, we'll use until we can use them no more. I mean, spill kits is, is, again, I see as a normal practice. Whenever we run low, we've got a local sawmill that we'll use and, uh, and uh, collect some uh, sawdust, and, uh, which is quite uh, an old-fashioned way, but a good way of uh, you know, dealing with uh, especially oils and so forth. 95% of our oils are in bulk. Um, we, have a, we have three uh, tanks out the back with our bulk um, engine oils, um, so we don't use packets. We're not throwing away, um, you know, little bits of oil in the bottom of containers. Everything's pumped directly in vehicles, so there's very little waste in that regard. Mm. All of our gear oils and so forth are the same thing. We're all um, in uh, in drums with with pumps on them, removing any refrigerant from an, uh, from a cooling system um, or from air conditioning system is recycled, um, is sent away, and uh, depends on the depends on the product either destroyed or recycled, whatever it is. But yeah, definitely um, we keep that. Um, not only are we obliged, I mean, we're an ARC uh, member. And, I mean, in regards to noise pollution for our techs, we do supply all our techs um, on, on starting with earmuffs and, and all safety equipment, but earmuffs and earplugs are one of them. Um, so we try to limit the impact that, the, that this industry can have on the person. But we are... As much as we're not on this side a residential, I mean we're in an industrial area. We actually back onto a residential um, uh, area. We we've done we have done a lot to limit our impact on residents. Um, we have had an air compressor relocated internally into our workshop and spent considerable amount of money on getting a very quiet and um, a, a very quiet compressor, which a stays in our workshop and b doesn't interfere with the locals. We've also, um, you know, planted a few trees in our back area to limit, you know, to, to buffer or limit the noise transferred over, you know, in, into the residential area.